Hey guys, Jessica again with your Parallax Project of the Week. Today we're going to use the QTI Line Follower App Kit to get our Bobot to navigate through electrical tape mazes. As always, we're only going to need a few components to get this done. We're going to need your Bobot robot, the QTI Line Follower App Kit, electrical tape, and white poster board. Let's get started. When all is said and done, your Bobot will be able to navigate through electrical tape mazes that include left turns, right turns, T-intersections, and even dead ends. Each of these obstacles pose a number of navigational challenges that you can solve, improving your Bobot's performance in larger and more complex mazes. But before we begin, let's take a look at where all the documentation and source code is. As with all of our mini-projects, full documentation can be found at forums.parallax.com, stamps in class, stamps in class mini-projects. Now, before continuing, you're going to want to run how to Bobot line following with four QTIs. This will get you familiar with how the QTIs work, which in turn will give you a better understanding of the commands used in our maze navigation program. Once you've completed that project, you can move on to maze navigation with QTIs. After running how to Bobot line following with four QTI sensors, you know that the QTIs return a zero or a one, depending on if they're on a white or a black surface. Using this knowledge, we can successfully navigate our Bobot through mazes of black vinyl electrical tape using select case statements. The first thing we'll have to do is mount the QTIs so the Bobot can detect turns and other obstacles. We'll want the sensors to be spread apart so the outermost sensors can detect turns and the center sensors can detect the straight tracks. Moving each sensor to the outside edge of the long cuts and the Bobot chassis should accomplish this. The second thing we'll want to do is to create our electrical tape mates. Using black vinyl electrical tape, create the maze that you see here. Each track is two pieces of electrical tape thick, and exact dimensions can be found on the forum thread. Just like any other robotic application, we're going to have to run some calibrations. The first calibration process is going to make sure that our Bobot moves in a perfectly straight line. The catch is that we don't want the Bobot to move at full speed. Since each movement is dependent on the state of each QTI, the slower the Bobot moves, the more readings we can obtain. Experiment with values until your Bobot moves perfectly forward at a slower pace. The next step will be to calibrate your Bobot to execute perfect 90 degree right and left turns, something you've already completed in Robotics with the Bobot Chapter 4 Activity 2, right? Good. Use those values to program your Bobot to execute perfect 90 degree left and right turns while staying centered on the maze path. Now there are two unique obstacles that your Bobot will encounter when navigating its way through this maze. T-intersections and dead ends. Let's take a look at T-intersections first. One solution, which we'll use in this application, is for the Bobot to make a random decision on which way to turn. We can do this by using the random command and looking at a single bit of the random number generated. Then the Bobot can turn left or right depending on if the value of that bit is a 0 or a 1. The test code for this application operates a little differently, and that will use the debug terminal to simulate each turn. This will speed up the cal calibration process. Test this code by moving the Bobot along a straight path and observing the first turn simulated when the Bobot reaches the T-intersection. The second unique obstacle is the dead end. There are many ways to solve this problem, but in this application, the Bobot will back up until it reaches the turn that brought it into the dead end, perform a 90 degree turn, and continue on its way. But what then? The Bobot still made another turn that brought it into the dead end, and if it makes that turn again, the Bobot will return to start. The solution is to introduce an artificial intelligence variable, named AI. When the Bobot goes into the dead end, we can set that value to 1, and then whenever the Bobot is going to execute a left turn, it can check if the AI variable is set, and if it is, it can ignore the turn by moving forward for 50 pulses. After that, the variable gets set back to zero, and the Bobot can execute left turns as necessary. The last calibration that we'll have to do is code to keep our Bobot centered on the electrical tape path. Now, there are a lot of ways your Bobot can be knocked off course when it's navigating through the maze. Um, the tape might not be perfectly straight, it might slip during a turn, things like that. And keep in mind that line correction in maze applications is very tricky because the Bobot can get knocked off course in so many ways and it would have to respond in a different way each time. So the way that we'll deal with it in this application is whenever the Bobot detects that it's moving off course, it will respond in the following way. The Bobot will stop, 
slowly rotate until the two center sensors are back on the line, then turn left and right, or right and left, depending on how it went off track, to center itself back on the line. When calibrating this program for your Bobot, you'll want to experiment with lots of different situations to make sure that your Bobot can get back on track no matter what happens. You can even shake the poster board to force the Bobot off track and see how it responds. Congratulations! We've completed the calibration process and we're now ready to put the full program together. Now, at first glance, the program might seem rather long, but keep in mind that it's really just a compilation of all of the calibration programs that we've just run. You can use the program in the project documentation as a template and replace each subroutine with the subroutines in each of your calibration programs. You may also find that you need to adjust calibration values once you put everything together, and that's okay. Just keep playing around with the code until your Bobot can consistently navigate through your electrical tape mates. And we're done. Keep in mind, though, that this code is really only valid for the maze provided, but it's easily adaptable to any kind of maze that you can think of. Challenge yourself by creating random mazes and seeing if you can code your Bobot to get through them. You can even set up competitions among your friends to see who can get through the maze the best or the fastest. As always, full documentation and source code can be found at www.parallax.com and click the Project of the Week banner or you can go directly to the Stamps and Class Mini Projects page on forums.parallax.com. Until next time, happy developing! Hey again! I'm standing here in our Parallax Purple Room, which is filled with really cool projects that people have created. Do you have any idea for a good project, but you're just not sure how to get started? Well, if you send your ideas into Stamps and Class at parallax.com, your project could be featured in a future Parallax Project of the Week. Seriously, send them in! Remember, there are no small projects, just small developers.